Hello friend. In this video, we will be looking at the principles the court will consider when the recommendation of the children's guardian is in conflict with the instruction of the child to the solicitor. Secondly, when should a child be separately represented within care proceeding? Is the doctrine of Gillick competence relevant to this consideration? In which circumstances can it be said that a child is competent within care proceedings to instruct her or his own solicitor? Competence of a child or the quality of being competent means adequacy, possession of required skill, knowledge, qualification or capacity. The capacity of a child to understand a situation and to act. The competence of a child was examined in the Gillick case, crucially not for the purpose of giving instruction to a solicitor, but how medical professionals should deal with young people who want advice on sexual matters but cannot be persuaded to inform their parents or to permit the medical professionals to inform their parents. One of the conditions that the court deems necessary to be satisfied before such advice is provided by a medical professional is that the young person must have sufficient maturity to understand what is involved. This principle is reported in Gillick and West Norfolk and Wisbeach Health Authority, reported in 1986, one appeal cases from page 112. The Children Act 1989 emphasises the importance of a child's competence. When the court is considering a child's welfare, the child's competence is one of the factors to be taken into account. The court must consider the provisions of section 13A, B and D of Children Act 1989, the child's ascertainable wishes and feelings considered in light of his age and understanding, his physical, emotional needs, his age, sex, background and any characteristics of his which the court considers relevant. Should the maturity or competency test propounded in the Gillick case on its own be sufficient to determine whether a young person is sufficiently competent to instruct his or her own solicitor in proceeding involving children? The Gillick test was not propounded as the basis for separate representation. We will now look at the applicable statutory provisions, case law and practical tests to be applied to determine when a child can be deemed as competent for the purpose of separate representation. The British courts have power either to interview the children or to order their separate representation. However, the courts are generally reluctant to involve children directly in proceedings, preferring instead to rely upon professional reports. This was considered in the case of Re H, a child, reported in 2006 EWCA CIV from page 1247. The reluctance of the court to order separate representation is partly because there are many instances when the child's perception of what is meant to be a party in proceedings is necessarily imaginative rather than founded on any experience and the child might only be interested in an opportunity to communicate with his or her legal representative. Re H, a child, reported in 2006 EWCA CIV from page 1247 at para 6. Advocates need to be aware that there is a trend in private law applications and public law applications under the Children Act 1989 towards a more liberal use of separate representation in cases of particular difficulty or in relation to older children as a means of ensuring that the voice of the child is heard properly. There are also instances where judges hear children to reassure the children in private that their views are being heard without ordering a separate representation. It is doubtful whether a typical child under the age of 16 is mature enough to fully understand the workings of the court, understand why a psychological assessment has been commissioned as opposed to psychiatric assessment. Even where the view of the guardian is different to that of the child, can the guardian not express this in her report? The court is also aware that it is often the case that the older child may be articulate but may not want to be embroiled, does not want to attend court, but wants to ensure that when the judge makes his or her decision, the child view is clear to the judge. The competence of the child is therefore an important element, but it is not the only test for separate representation. The competency of a child is a combination of factors which appears to vary depending on the child's age, understanding, maturity and the situation called into question. In the case of C, a child, reported in 2008 EWCA CIV from page 551, a Supreme Court case, the trial judge in a contact order hearing ordered that a 14-year-old child should be represented by her own solicitor, an experienced child solicitor, given the complexity of the contact issues. 
Statutory provisions and case laws also help in clarifying what legal principles should be followed in determining whether a child is competent to give instructions to his or her solicitor and when or how a court should direct separate representation for a child within care proceedings. Care proceedings are proceedings in which a local authority seeks a care or supervision order under Section 31 Children Act 1989. The general rule or procedure when there is no conflict between the wishes of the child and the children's guardian is for a guardian to be appointed by the court on behalf of the children and for the guardian to appoint a solicitor to represent the child under paragraph 6.2 of Practice Direction 16A to the Family Procedure Rules 2010. In children proceedings under Section 41.1 of Children Act 1989 and Rule 16.3, Family Procedure Rules 2010, a court must appoint a children's guardian for the child or children concerned, unless satisfied that it is not necessary to do so to safeguard the child or children's interest. We shall now examine other statutory provisions that allow or enable the court to order separate representation for children within care proceedings. Under Section 41.3 of the 1989 Act, the court may appoint a solicitor to represent the child where the child concerned is not represented by a solicitor, a child's guardian has not been appointed for the child, the child has sufficient understanding to instruct a solicitor and wishes to do so, and it appears to the court that it would be in the child's best interest for him to be represented by a solicitor. Another situation where the court may appoint a solicitor to represent the child is set out in Rule 16.21, Family Procedure Rules 2010, where it appears to the children's guardian that the child is instructing a solicitor direct or intends to conduct and is capable of conducting the proceedings on the child's behalf. The children's guardian must inform the court of the fact. Where this situation applies, the children's guardian must perform such additional duties as the court may direct and may, with the permission of the court, have legal representation in the conduct of those duties. In this type of situation, as soon as it becomes apparent to the children's guardian that the child is instructing the solicitor direct, then solicitor instructed by the child must lodge an application under Part 16.21, Family Procedure Rules 2010, for directions to make inquiry into the child's competence to provide instructions to solicitor direct, including, if necessary, the commissioning of any specialist assessment that may be relevant to the child, for the court to deem the child as sufficiently competent to provide instruction to the solicitor direct, in the interim to receive instructions direct from the child, for the court to consider appointing a separate solicitor for the children, for the children's guardian to continue to be involved in the proceedings by continuing to be the independent child-focused view of the issues involved in the proceedings, the children's guardian to continue to scrutinise any care plan, letter of instructions proposed by any of the parties. The court may also consider instructing a solicitor for the children's guardian separately. In secure accommodation order hearings, the court's approach is to view seriously the deprivation of liberty under Section 25, Children Act 1989, and readily allow separate representation for the child. In a secure accommodation order in the case of M, child, re 2001 EWCA CIV 458, here the court allowed the 15-year-old to have separate representation, although she admitted to having serious drug problems. In another secure accommodation order case of W Borough Council versus DK 2000 EWCA CIV 255, an expert was instructed to assess whether the 15-year-old was competent to understand and to take part in the court proceedings. Although deemed incompetent to understand the proceedings, he nevertheless obtained separate representation and with his legal team he appealed the secure accommodation order but the appeal was not successful. In K, a child, re Rev 1, 2011, EWHC, the court considered making a secure accommodation order in respect of a 13-year-old girl. Notwithstanding her age, the court allowed her to have separate representation and she was allowed to attend the court hearing. In order to reach these decisions, the court considered nine factors, including the age and level of understanding of the child, the nature and strength of the child's wishes, the child's emotional and psychological state, the effect of influence from others, the matter to be discussed at court, the evidence to be given, the child's behaviour, practical and logistical considerations, 
and the integrity of the proceedings. Separate representation will be deemed appropriate where the proceedings involve complex sexual abuse or physical abuse case. The victim is one of several children. The child is competent and the evidence of the victim child is likely to conflict with the other children. Another situation when the court ordered separate representation was in care proceedings involving sexual abuse. There were several children but only one child was the victim of the abuse and was of sufficient age and understanding to give evidence. The court's approach was to view seriously the nature of the abuse and readily allowed separate representation on the basis that the victim must be given the opportunity to obtain independent legal advice in relation to the proceedings generally and particularly to any contemplated discrete fact-finding hearings. When an application is made for separate representation, the court should be invited to also consider the impact of such an order on the court timetable. It will inevitably cause delay to the proceedings and it is unlikely that the care proceedings will be completed within the 26 weeks public law outline window. If the basis of the order for separate representation includes the complexity or the importance of the issues, then the court should also be invited to consider whether the case need to be reallocated to a district judge, circuit judge or a high court judge. Further information regarding separate legal representation for a child may be found on our website, www.tinaju.co.uk. I hope you found this information useful. Please provide your feedback through admin at tinaju.co.uk. We have also produced other topical videos on our YouTube channel, Tina Jew.